I was always a collector since I was a kid. I collected stamps, I collected coins, I collected tools, I collected all this stuff. But you know what? The records were different because you could get something out of it. It's like put the needle on it and go, oh my God. And these are all, this was the, the music that I was into it was 99% black and it was five kids from the ghetto who wrote this song and were lucky enough to record it. And it's like, they might have nothing going for them in their life, but you know what? This moment where they just poured out their heart, they did their own harmonies, they, they made up whatever they wanted on the street corners. They just did it their way and were lucky enough to be recorded. 99.99% of the time, it never did anything. There's only a handful of these things out there. And it was just magic. It's like a, an art form. Ouch. This is overstock. I bought all the singles from a distributor in Center City. They're all over the place. Up here is a huge jukebox operator I bought out called TAC, T-A-C, in New Orleans. All these boxes, this is all a system that they've been in business since the 20s. This is all the 45s. This goes, wraps around all over the place. The blue boxes are all the rhythm and blues. The yellow boxes are pop. And down the basement, there's red, which is country. Oh. Anyway, this is just uh, wow. what you call a mess. But uh, I got a lot of people from overseas come up here, you know, if they're looking for stuff. Um, just mounds of stuff that's never been filed. This thing is 80 feet long, the store, so it's, it runs uh, everywhere. What's uh, what's happening here with the cardboard boxes with hand labels? Stuff? All this? This is an overstock. Uh, CDC's, I bought a store out in Cleveland that was an interesting place. I had great records in the 70s. And so, this was from a pressing plant. I used to get into a place in Philadelphia that pressed Imperial and they were like nickel, dime. I used to buy tons and tons of records. I just, I love records. This is a home. This is like a, a graveyard for records. But people are throwing stuff out. That's what all this stuff is. I hate albums, but you know what? These are albums that people just said, Look, I don't want them. You're going to do, do me a favor. Throw them in the garbage for me. And they walk out. Well, I don't... The garbage is... We'll take them up on the second floor. What countries in particular? Um, They're big with this. Yeah. Japan. Very, very good. Uh, England. Germany. Uh, Belgium. Uh, Canada, if you want to call it a country. Oh, I know. I always... I tell everybody, I make my money off the industry's mistakes. In other words, you know, it's, you know, uh, people, I'm not in the record business, I'm in the junk business or the schlock business or whatever. In other words, I don't even want to know from what's selling the charts. That doesn't mean anything to me. Give me the records that nobody ever heard of, you know, the oddball crap. You know, give me the stuff that nobody wants, that everybody thinks is crap, because guess what? There's a market for everything. Okay, this is all, I mean, I explained it. Oh, Jesus. My head is blown because I, I, my orders didn't go out today with UPS, so I'm right away not doing good mentally. I don't know where to go up, down, whatever. This is just showing you that uh, this is just, this is the floor we, we operate off of. Oh, there's John. Um, anyway. There's a cat. You want to get the cat? Tiger! Look, 62, I was selling records to my friends. You know, was I used to have a car with a record player in it, and I used to play the records to them. I'd say, I knew when everybody got paid, this is how I started. I used to go to their house when it was Friday, when they got their paychecks, and the parents would say, oh, he's out there again. I see him out there. That's, <laughs> you know, no, much worse. Anyway, so I would get the kids in the car. I'd play. I had one of those record players that played 14 records upside down. It was before cassettes and all. And I used to sell them. This is this. Give me two bucks. Give me five bucks. Give me whatever. You know, I was just, this was fun. I was making money, but I would invest it immediately, and I was always looking for things for me. So the, the whole bottom line with me doing this, it was always to have the best collection of music. And in the beginning, it was just the music, and then in 64, it switched to original labels. I don't want the reissues anymore. I just want the first pressings. That's a sickness. All right, so this is the basement. 
Okay. Anyway, this is where I house all the stuff. This is a little bit of everything. Jukebox operators, I love to buy them out. See, most people want, here's the deal with jukebox operators. Most people want records they, that were hits that they remember when they were kids. So what better deal than jukebox operators? They're cheap. Ouch, I'm stuck. And <laughs> once they're off the boxes, oh yeah, once they're off the jukeboxes, they mean nothing to them. It's just junk. Here, let's go this way. I bet you can't, well, you might not. Yeah, he's yeah. good. He'll... Anyway, so I love jukeboxes. Jukebox operators are the best, especially when you go back to the 50s. You all right? So. This over here is, this is called, see this area? This is called hire young kids to sort records for me and be on a different floor. In other words, don't ever do it. Look at this mess. No respect for records. Place is a disaster. Um, so they're fired. Earth Angel. Um, anyway. So here, let's walk down here. This is called, you know, uh, just buying like a pig. And not knowing what you're doing. See, I used to have it together, but see this? I mean, if there's records in here, I don't know what the hell they are. So how smart am I? Everybody thinks, oh, this guy's a genius. Look, he's got all these records, but if you can't put your hand on them, what good is it? You with me? It's just the kids again. As I, as I step on records. I should have stayed with the. Uh, I should have stayed with the accounting. Hey, good work. These things. This is like a human being. This is like a person. This got something to say. You know, it's got it's got character. You know, they they're not all good, but you know, there's somebody. You know, somebody put a lot of work into every one of these things. So, uh, and I just I appreciate that. Even if it's garbage, it's still. You know, there's an artwork. There's a label. There's it's. It's not a CD or any of this crap in other words this is a, to me a cd is like a tape it's just it's going to last longer this is the real deal the vinyl this is this is what i remember when i was a kid i used to sit there and look at i got mesmerized watching the label go around and this is just every every all these little independent companies it was just fabulous and you know what i'm 57 years old and i'm still 12 years old in a sense because i never grew up i still love this i'm one of the fortunate people in this world that does something they love there's not a lot of people that can say that, but if I could do anything in this world, anything, this is what I would do. Because I'm having fun. You know what? I make people happy. I send, uh, you know, music. You know, I, I, it's a mail order business. I know what it's like. When I was a kid, I used to send away for the, the, the cereal box tops and all and get my decoder ring or whatever the hell it was. I just knew I was, that was like, come home from school or whatever, and bingo, there it was. Well, that's what I do to people. The same thing. They, go, they come home from a lousy day at work. And before their wife can get a hold of them and start screaming, they see my package. Or they deal with the wife and then they grab my package. But I make a lot of people happy. I know that. And that gives me a lot. You know, I, I, I get off on that. 